And in order to get your intuitions going, I'm going to rely on a thought experiment that I think you're pretty familiar with um, from the literature, and that is the idea of a, of a kind of pleasure machine. So you can imagine like a virtual reality machine in which the line between reality and simulation has just become completely blurred. So if you get into this machine, then you're going to experience all and only pleasures. You're only going to have um, subjectively positive affect. Um, and you're going to think that everything that you experience is good and real. Now the reality is you're sort of lying alone, inert, and your brain is being manipulated, right? You're not actually having, um, you're not actually in communion with like real human goods, but you think that you are. It seems to you to be totally real. And so the question is, would you want to get in that machine? Does that seem like a life that is worthy of imitation? Would you want to tell small children to aspire to such a life? Does that seem uh, beautiful or worthy of admiration? Um, or does it seem like a cop-out? Now, if you are a subjectivist about happiness, I think that you have a hard time explaining what would be wrong with getting into such a machine. Um, like, why should you really care about human excellence at all? Why not just get into the machine or take a happiness pill and call it a day? Um, because look, according to subjectivism, if, if happiness really is just a positive affective state, then you could be manipulated into that state, right? And if all that really matters is being in that state, then it doesn't really matter the way things really are. It doesn't matter if you are having some sort of real experience of a human good. Um, and there's really no way to make a principal distinction between false happiness or a simulation of happiness and true and deep happiness. And I think one of the clear benefits of the Aristotelian position is that we do have an external measure because you cannot separate happiness, being truly and deeply fulfilled and satisfied with actual communion with real human goods. It has to be grounded in that. Um, so my problem with subjectivism about happiness is it's based on a dualism, right? There's a dualism between happiness and the reality of the good, uh, but there's also a dualism between individual benefit and objective good. And I think that one of the values of, I mean, one of the principal insights of the Aristotelian view of happiness is that, look, insofar as you feel subjectively satisfied or deeply fulfilled in your life, it will be because you actually are attaining your good. And the only way that you can get that is through the cultivation of virtue, right? How does virtue operate in you, right? Well, the cultivation of virtue is a kind of deep transformation of a human person. And what does it do? It makes you fit to enjoy what is truly excellent in human life. So on this view, there is no dualism between morality and happiness. Rather, the idea is that, look, the point or the purpose of the moral life, of a human life, is to be happy, right? It's to live an excellent human life together with others, and there's no other goal that would be worthy of our devotion and aspiration.